Greetings, viewers. A uh, quick apology. I've been on the road and down with the flu for a couple weeks now, so I haven't had a chance to do these recordings. Uh, this video will be about Uplink 7, and uh, Uplink 8 will actually be out soon. I'll have some video content for that, and a video on the Bernie 2020 campaign, which is a landmark event in history, and go into some of the details of that. So for this video, uh, Uplink 7 explores uh, Sega's Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise. It's a video game version of a, one of the classic manga comic strip series from the 1980s by Bronson called Fist of the North Star. It's one of the best of the series. It's fantastically good. Uh, amazing characters and really interesting series because its genre is post-apocalyptic science fiction and with some martial arts elements. And those can be extremely reactionary and revanchist and quite toxic and imperialist. Brunson rejects all that. He gives you a progressive hero set in this very dystopian landscape. So Kenshiro, the main character, has a quest for justice. And you go through all of his battles and fights and struggles to achieve some level of justice. And it's really well done. And there's some profound critiques, not just of Japan's own... Uh, militarist fascist past, Japan had an empire between 1895 and 1945, did terrible damage to the world and has been sorry for it ever since, but also to other empires, the violence of the American empire in the Cold War era, there was the Soviet empire. Many other empires are on the planet these days and they're all doing horrible things to citizens and they need to be denounced as well, so it's part of that um, critique. So three things specifically that the video game did right. Uh, the basics are, number one, it gets this theme of justice right. We'll talk about that in a second. Number two, it has some superlative script writing. And Sega had some in-house advantages there, so we'll explain that. Number three, it got the problem of gender and nonviolence right. It's a very profound critique of imperial masculinity at work, which is very subtle. It's there in the original, and it's there in the video game. So what does this mean in practice? Well. Kenshiro, the main character, is uh, very similar to the main character of the Yakuza games, who's a former Yakuza Kiyama, and goes around and you know, solves problems, essentially, and he's sort of part social worker, part agent of the welfare state, part investigative authority, but he has a couple things about what he does. He never kills, and he only exacts justice. He will never consciously harm anyone or anything. Even the mob bosses that he's tracking down, confronting, or the corrupt politicians, the sleazy corporate people committing crimes, he'll confront them with the evidence, evidence of their criminality and might allow the police to arrest them. He's not going to inflict violence on them. He refuses to kill. He's never going to cross that line. Now, the main character of Fist of the North Star is someone who does have to kill because it's a post-apocalyptic world. There are no police to take people to, so you have to be decisive about conflicts. But that said, the the original manga and the video game are very, very careful to stage that, to showcase that, yes, there are alternatives, but if there are no alternatives in this case, yes, violence has to happen. But it's framed in this very subtle way, such that it's not that you're doing violence on someone. What it is that when you defeat an enemy, you're actually inflicting a kind of a justice. In other words, their own sins come back to haunt them, and that's what really destroys them in the end. That's all that you're doing. You're just kind of revealing the, their own criminality to themselves and they can't take it. And that takes them out. You're not actually inflicting more violence on an already destroyed world. So this is a very, very subtle world building that happens in the video game. And uh, handled extremely well. And this ties in nicely with point number two about script writing. So the team at Sega that worked on the video game, you know, they had lots of experience working on the Yakuza games, which have really effective world building. So some of the best open world brawlers of all time, great characters, great stories. And the secret is that you have to spend just as much time getting the smallest character right. And the reason is you don't know where your player is gonna go in the open world. So if you have a bad experience with some out of the way, out of the corner, little nook and cranny, that's gonna condition everything else and then the experience breaks. But if you have a good experience or an immersive experience, some out of the way merchant at the end of time and you go into a village and then there's this cool quest that happens, you feel like, yes, this is a real world I can invest in and it makes sense. That's how worlds are. Our world doesn't stop being immersive in daily life. We go around, the world is the world, right? Well, video games have to do that kind of work. They have to sustain this credibility everywhere in the worlds that they create. Very difficult, that's why they're really difficult to get right. 
So Sega gets it right. Third point about gender nonviolence. This is amongst the most subtle things that the video game does very well. Part of that is the video game, you can think of the video game as a work of really superior, high-class fan media because none of its stories spoil the original story. Uh, this is the North Star, it's this huge franchise, their films and movies and this, that, and the other. But the Lost Paradise is just another chapter. And it borrows some of the characters, and I, I knew about the series, so I, I appreciated the ways that they took these old characters in the series and made them new and interesting and gave them a little story and style lights, etc. But there's no spoiling there. There's absolutely nothing spoiled, so you can play the video game and still be surprised by the amazing things that happened in the manga and, and the other materials in the franchise. So that part is right. Underlying it all, though, is a deep commitment to nonviolence. Huge contradiction because, you know, your main character, Kenshiro, is dealing out all this violence, but it's actually not a contradiction. What it is, again, it's this principle of he represents justice in this lawless world. And over and over again, the very best of the series, the very best of the episodes in Lost Paradise, they're about this problem of how do you create justice? How do you create justice? That's what really motivates him and the player, and they give some wonderful answers. And the, the short answer is, solidarity. You have to fight the good fight and inspire others and together you can get there. But you have to do that hard work of everyone all in together.